Hello, thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you so much for joining me for another Sunday. Uh, I wanted to uh, share with you a number of announcements. One is that we do have Rights Now Media, an app that's full of wonderful Christian resources for all ages. So if you do not have it, sign it up. It's uh, www.bemc.ca on our website, on our church website. And you can sign that up. Uh, this week, I wanted to recommend to you a sermon series called uh, Right in the Eye by Andy Stanley. It's on the book of Judges, and I'm doing the book of Judges as well. Second thing is that I wanted to say thank you so much for giving to the Lord. Thank you so much for your generosity. Um, we do have e-transfer. If you wanted to use it, it's also on our website under GIF. And third, I wanted to encourage us, do connect with one another. I know that we have social, sorry, we have physical distancing. Um, but during this isolation, it's very difficult for a lot of us. Uh, it could be very depressing. It could be very challenging to reach out to one another. Pick up the phone, text, email, social media, whatever you want. Reach out to one another because we are in this together. God is in this with us. And in order to go through this, um, we really need to stick together. Um, and that's wonderful for, for a community that we have. Um, we are family. We do can call on one another and say hi and say, how you're doing? How can we pray for you? So remember that. Um, let's move on. Uh, today, Our we continue our sermon series called, Who is My King? Of course, Jesus is my king. Jesus is our king. But what does that mean? What does that mean when we call him our king? What does it look like, particularly when we face challenge? Um, so today, we're going to look through it, through the uh, book of Judges, uh, chapter 5. Book of Judges, chapter 5, is actually a song. A song written after the victory, after the Israelites have victory over the Canaanite king called Jabban. Um, Deborah and Barak, they sang this song, a song of praise, a song of recognizing and acknowledging who their God is. Um, it's, it's wonderful because a lot of times it's hard to remember history. But when it's written in songs, um, it's much easier uh, for future people to remember. And so uh, today we're going to look at that. Um, I wanted to divide this into a number of sections because there's like 31 verses. I wanted to divide it into three sections um, so that uh, you can look through those sections on your own. You can check out my sermon notes. Um, but I wanted to highlight uh, things inside that section. Um, and I may also read a few verses in that section to highlight the point that was in there. Even though in this scripture, in this passage, there seems to be a lot of verses that is hard to um, hard to explain, hard to interpret, um, uh, because there's a lot of backgrounds involved. There's also a lot of locations, uh, places involved. But the message was very clear. So I'm going to highlight those things for us. And hopefully that will encourage you. So the first thing it said, uh, I want to remind us, I'm sure that a lot of us, when we come to faith, people would share this with us. Um, this is a life that we need to exercise our faith. Uh, in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7, it talks about that we live by faith, not by sight. I'm sure you have heard of it. We live by faith, not by sight. What does that mean? Um, or another verse from uh, Hebrew chapter 11, verse 1, it says that um, we have confidence um, uh, Assurance in what we do not see and confidence in what we hope for. So once again, uh, this faith journey, it's for us to practice uh, our faith. Um, it's not necessary only focusing on what we can see, but it's a lifestyle that we put our faith into things that a lot of times that we cannot see. Well, when we face challenges, this is what the Israelites did. Um, they could look at it from a worldly standpoint. Hey, this is what it is. We're going to focus on the problem. Or they can look at it from a godly standpoint. Um, we're going to focus on a God that who is in control. So let's look at verse 6. 
chapter 5, verse 6, it says that in the days of Shamgar, son of Anat, in the days of Jael, the highways were abandoned. Travelers took to winding path. What they're saying is that in those times before uh, they have victories, even the path, the roads that they have built, that they have traveled so many times, they no longer to do that because the enemies, um, they were subjected to the enemies. And so the problem was that they were subjected to the enemies and even paths that they travel, they can no longer do that. They have to go around. So that's their worldly problems. And they see it at physically, yes, this is what it is. But let's see verse 4 and 5, how they see that in the eyes of God in their situations when they face challenges. It says here, When you, Lord, went out from Seir, when you marched from the land of Edom, the earth shook, the heavens poured, the clouds poured down water, the mountains quaked before the Lord, the one of Sinai before the Lord, the God of Israel. What they are saying is that in terms of challenges, God is the one that who is actually fighting for them. God is the one that who is in control. God is the one that who is overseeing everything, even physically, even worldly stuff, that yes, they are under attack, they're subjected to their enemy. But there's a God that who's actually in control. So rather than focusing on our problems, we need to focus on the God beyond the challenge. Let me give you an example. I remember there were times that uh, there, there's a time that when I, uh, um, in the process of adopting one of my kids, um, month after month, six weeks, eight weeks, every six week, eight weeks, um, we hear news uh, from the court about my son. And uh, what they're saying is that, no, uh, your son uh, at the court, it's postponing the, the process. And so every, every time when we hear, okay, there's a court day coming up, uh, we kind of get excited. Okay, maybe this is the day that the judge is going to rule and then saying that, yes, uh, you're able to, you're allowed to adopt your son. Uh, at that point, I wasn't, we can't call him our son. Uh, we can say that, like, we, you can adopt this child. Um, but court day after court day, um, by the time 3, 4, 1 come, we started to get discouraged. We could look at the issue and we started to say, well, you know what? This is not going to happen. Um, and, 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 and we could get discouraged. We could focus on that. Or we could focus on a God that who is in control. What we trust about God is God is good. God is love. He is going to be in control of the situation. Not that he's going to give this child to us or not. But we know that he is going to um, rule over the situation that is what's the best for the child, what's best for us. So with that faith, we rely on him. And, and so when court day come up over and over again, we continue to bring in an attitude of God. You are beyond the challenges that we face. We, we don't understand why it keep postponing. Um, but we understand that you have the best interests of the child and you have the best interests of us. And um, you will uh, take control of the situation. And with that, instead of focusing on the problems every time, we, 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 we may enter in the beginning, we enter sleepless night, uh, we have anxiety, we just don't know what to go about that. Um, we're starting to experience peace. We started to be able to let go and let God. We see the issues, um, not in a worldly standpoint, but in a godly standpoint. God, you are bigger than that. Um, you are the most powerful God. You are God uh, that created the universe. When we take the step of faith, we believe that God is in control of every single step we take. When we seek him, when we follow him. And so in the midst of that challenge, we can praise him. We can give praise to him. We can say, Lord, you are in control of that. We praise you because you are a wonderful God. You care about this and you allowed this to happen. And in the midst of it, we praise him because of who he is. Because he is good. He is love. And so instead of magnifying the problems and minimizing God, we now magnifying God and minimizing the problem. So that's the first one. We have, When we face challenges, we can have uh, two kinds of view. Uh, one is a ver uh, worldly view, 
and the other one is a heavenly standpoint. So uh, let's move on to the second part, verse 9 to 23. Verse 9 to 23, there's two attitudes when we face challenges. Um, one is that we don't care or we just like a bystander not doing anything. The other one is to give it our all, to fully involve. Let me read you the scripture. Um, verse 15 and 16, it's about uh, not a care in the world being a bystander. It's... It says that the princess of Issachar were with Deborah. Yes, Issachar was with Barak, sent under his command into the valley. And here it goes. In the districts of Reuben, there was much searching of heart. Why do you stay among the sheep pens to hear the whistling for the flock? The districts of Reuben, there was much searching of heart. And Gilead stayed beyond the Jordan, and then why did he linger by the ships? Usher remained on the coast and stayed in his coast. This is verse 17. Basically, when um, Barak bring an army, he has people from uh, a tribe of uh, Naphtali as well as uh, uh, Subalon, and also uh, some other people as well. But uh, in here, the scripture talks about there's a couple tribes that they stay behind, that they were like bystanders, that they didn't have a care of the world. But not like verse 18. Here's verse 18. These people, they give it their all, they fully involve. The people of Subalon risked their very lives so that Naphtali on the terrorist fields. Let me give an example. When we are going through uh, the process of adoption, um, every week, we actually have to drive this child, now it's our drive this child, uh, for, uh, to visitation. So we drop off the child, and then we stay in the parking lot. We have no idea what details happening in there. Um, but then afterwards, we pick up the child, and then we go home. And week after weeks, months after months, we have been doing that. We could be like a bystander, because they said that if you don't want to drive the child, uh, we have... Um, Drivers, they can come to your house, pick up the child, drop off the child, and then after the visitation, they pick up the child and bring it back to you. Or you can do that. And for us, um, we really wanted to give it our best, give it our all. So not only that, we, we say, no, we are going to drive, drive the child to the visitation. But not only that, they a lot of times they say, well, just just go somewhere and come back to pick up the child. I just stay there and I stay there and pray. I stay there until they're done. And when they're done, they know that I'm outside waiting to pick up the child. Um, we could be like um, a certain tribe, like Asha and, and Dan. Um, they stay around when Israelites were in battle. And, and they decided to be a bystander. They didn't do anything. Or they could be like um, Subalun and Naphtali, the tribe. Um, that they fully involve, that they uh, give it their all. When we face challenge, we trust God. But that doesn't mean that we just step back and do nothing. We get fully involved. We, 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 we give it our all. The reason is because God is a God that He wants to involve us. It's amazing. If, when we look through this song, this chapter, there's a lot of times that I say, uh, it says, um, um, who's going to come and help uh, um, help God? Who's going to come and help Yahweh, the Messiah? God doesn't need our help. But what God wants is God wants to involve us. God wants to involve you and I in the process um, to accomplish his earthly plans. I'm sure that you remember the Lord's Prayer. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. This is a reason why Jesus taught us uh, to pray his will be done on earth. It's because God wants us on earth to work with him to achieve his will. What an amazing thing that we can involve in God's plan. You see, another thing is that God also see um, the way he see his people, it's how he see, um, you know, he's, he does not only say, well, this is my people. He said, you know, this is, this is me. Let me give you an example. 
Remember Apostle, uh, Apostle Paul? Before he was Paul, he was Saul. And when Saul was attacking the church, um, Jesus, uh, when Jesus revealed himself to, to, to Paul, to Saul, he said, why do you attack me? Um, just like uh, here, God, when these people attacking his people, he does not say that, why do you attack me? Sorry, why do you attack my people? He said, why do you attack me? He treated his people like he himself. Um, so in God's eyes, the struggles and wars that the Israelites face are actually his struggles and his wars, um, his battles. I don't know what do you think about that, but sometimes when we face challenges, we feel like we are alone. Um, we feel like, God, like you're so far. But if we think about it, God is actually saying, this is my battle. Um, this is my struggle. This is my challenge. Um, if you touch one of me, you're actually touching me. Uh, you're actually attacking me. So because of that, God is actually putting a lot more. Um, just wanted to encourage you with that. And final point. It says, um, there's two endings in verse 24 to 20, uh, 31st. 24 to uh, 30 verse. There's two endings. One is uh, verse 24 to 27. It's praising of Jael. Jael, it's uh, a woman that uh, ended up, um, uh, God hand over uh, the commander of uh, Yaban's, uh, king, of ya uh, king of Canaanite, Yaban's um, uh, uh, a general, uh, an army uh, leader called Sisera. And so God hands Sisera to Jael. Uh, it says that here, verse 24, Most blessed of women be Jael, the wife of Heber, the Canaanite, most blessed of ten dwelling women. He asked for water, and she gave him milk. In a bowl fit for nobles, she brought him curled milk. Her hand reached for the ten pack, her right hand for the workman's hammer. Uh, for the workman's hammer. She struck Sisera, she crushed his head, she shattered and pierced his temple. At her feet he sang, he fell there, he lay. At her feet he sang, he fell where he sang, there he fell dead. They were saying, wow, Jael, your obedience to what's God um, have given you victory. But then there's another ending from another woman, which is Sisera's mother. Um, verse 28 to 30, it talks about, Through the window peers Sisera's mother. Behind the lettuce she cried out, Why is his chariot so long in coming? Why it's... The clatter of his chariots delay. The wisest of her ladies answer her. Indeed, she keeps saying to herself, Are they not finding and dividing the spoils of women or two for each man? Colorful garments as plunder for Sisera? Colorful garment embroidered, highly embroidered garments for my neck? All this as plunder. Her ending is actually a, a, a wishful thinking. You see, those that who are, face challenges, we face challenges all the time, Christian and non-Christian. But how we see the challenges determine also how um, we lift our life, which is uh, uh, we walk by faith, not by sight. And we see, just like I said, there's two viewpoints. One is that our worldly viewpoints um, just see it as it is or seeing that the God is beyond the challenge. And the second thing is that we do have two attitudes. One is that we can stand aside, no, we'll let it happen. The other one is that we'll pray, we'll give it all to God, we'll, we'll, we'll get involved in that. And because of that, there's two different kind of endings. One is that there's praise to God, there's praise to His people. The other one is that it's wishful thinking. That means that reality, whatever uh, happened, does not happen, didn't happen. So the conclusion is that when we face challenges, we face it with exercising our faith, having our attitude in God, focusing on God, magnifying God, minimizing the challenge. And so let's look at the last verse, verse 31, about Jael's love towards God. So may all your enemies perish, Lord, but may all who love you be like the sun when it rises in its strength. Then the land had peace for 40 years. Now the Lord has subjected their enemies under the Israelites for another 40 years. 
Praise the Lord. So at the end, um, some of you may already know that when we go through the adoption period, almost two years has passed. Almost two years. And, and at the end, it was even more and more court day. And they get more and more intense. But we continue to look at God. You are the one that who is in control. You are the one who is beyond all the challenges. We walk by faith, not by sight. We have confidence. We have assurance of what we do not see. Confidence of what we hope for. And we keep saying, Lord, it's what it's the best for the kid, for the child. And we continue to pray. We have people praying. We're so thankful for our church family for praying us through this. We're so thankful for other Christian families have been praying through this. And almost two years pass. We receive the paper. And we sign the paper. And the child doesn't know a thing. Continue to stay in our home uh, since the first day. Since he left the hospital. Since day four, he left the hospital. And since then, he is staying in our home. And today, he is doing well. He is growing well. Um, just, just a testimony. Just how the Lord, how wonderful it is. I wanted to bring this encouragement to you. And in the midst I do not understand and I do not know what challenges that you are facing. But I know that God, it's beyond all of that. He created the universe. He's our creator. And that we, we do. Don't just stand on the sideline. We lean heavily on God. And we have courage. We have courage. Because God is on our side. Let's pray. Oh, Lord, we give thanks. We give thanks that you are wonderful, God. God, when we face challenges, this is not only our challenge. You said this is your battle, your challenge. You see that that when people um, attack your people, you say that, why did, why did they attack you? Or you say that, do you need help? No, you don't need help. Your people need help. But you say, who's going to come and help you? I give thanks. That, Lord, thank you so much for the reminder. Um, I wanted to lift up uh, uh, our faith community into your hands. I wanted to lift up those that who experience difficulty, depression uh, in these challenging times. We ask, Lord, that uh, you will help all of us to keep our eyes on you, fix our eyes on you, and remember that you are our God. You are in control. Thank you, Lord, for this uh, chapter, uh, for, for this song. Um, we give thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he turn his face towards you and give you peace. Amen. Have a wonderful week.